Hi everyone, it's Dr. Andrew Orr here. I'm following on from one of my last videos about um, if you go in and have a laparoscopy and they don't find endometriosis, doesn't mean that I don't have endometriosis. And as I said, no, no, it doesn't. Um, but I also talked about adenomyosis in there too. Now, one of the things that people always ask me, well, what is the difference between endometriosis and adenomyosis? And the long answer is, well, there is no long answer. Short and simple is there is no difference. Histologically speaking, when we put them under the microscope, there is no difference. There's no difference between adenomyosis, which is deep within the uterine tissue, and endometriosis, which is found outside in the pelvis and anywhere but the uterus. <laughs> so what is the difference? Well, it's the name, that's it, and the location. So basically, adenomyosis is endometriosis that is infiltrated deep into the uterine tissue, and that's where it is. And that it's just a different name, that's it. Endometriosis is outside, um, again, when we talk, I've talked in one of the videos, people asking, well, you know, what is endometriosis? Well, endometriosis is just normal tissue, a bit like your endometrial tissue, growing out in abnormal areas where it shouldn't be. So it's normal tissue growing in abnormal areas. And it's basically what happens, it can bleed and it can be inflamed. And it's a bit like having your period out in your pelvis, really. Um, and that's... That's the long and short of it. Um, but the treatments for endometriosis and adenomyosis are pretty much the same, except in most cases, adenomyosis will cause more bleeding symptoms. So we often get women in that say, look, I'm getting all this pain. Um, I've got endometriosis and I've had that diagnosed um, but I'm getting this really, really, really heavy bleeding. And some of them are like gushing. I mean, they're sitting on and they're, it's like they're pouring a cup in there. That's what it's like. Um, and I often have to say to them, well, I think you've got adenomyosis. They go, yeah, but I had a laparoscopy and a hysteroscopy. They didn't find it. Again, a laparoscopy and a hysteroscopy won't find um, adenomyosis. Well, it can, sometimes there can be indicators on the uterus, especially with um, shading and stuff like that. But adenomyosis can be diagnosed with um, um, a high contrast um, ultrasound with dye and so forth, or an MRI most of the time. And I'll bring one up and I'll just show you um, what it looks like. Um, now, my handouts here. Uh, endo, there we go. And sorry, everyone. Um, wow. And when you want something, you can never find it. <laughs> um, sorry, I just bring it up. There we go. Handouts here. Now, there we go. So here it is, you can actually see adenomyosis. It's, you can actually see the discoloration on the uterus here. And actually you can see little pockets of endometriosis up on the, on the tubes and so forth. Plus there's a big fibroid there. But what we normally do is send people off for, um, um, an MRI, and sorry, it should look like, uh, sorry, <laughs> there we go. It should like that. So when they do the MRI, it'll actually look like a Venetian um, blind kind of look or a high contrast ultrasound will show the same, but it actually looks like Venetian blinds when it looks through this because that's where it shows all the adhesions and stuff like that that are built up. So that's how they diagnose adenomyosis. And more often than not, women with endometriosis also have adenomyosis. Now, 
bleeding or heavy bleeding isn't always a predictive symptom either because some women with adenomyosis are actually asymptomatic or they don't get heavy bleeding but some women with this endometriosis also get heavy bleeding as well but not as heavy as it is normally when you have adenomyosis so yeah so the treatment's the same um look endometriosis is estrogen driven um so it's not from estrogen dominance like a lot of people say it's estrogen driven even small amounts of estrogen drive the disease so a lot of the treatments medically involve progestins um, to help suppress it um, or slow down the growth of it. And that's why things like the Marina and progesterone only pills use um, Implanon, um, other forms of progesterones or progestins and then pain relief and stuff like that. But as I say to people too, that have the Marina and that one thing that with the Marina is that it does stop one of its one of the indicators is that it's there to stop heavy menstrual bleeding. Um, a lot of people think the marina is there for a pain relief as well. No, it's not there for pain relief. Sure, the small, tiny amounts of progesterone, I'm telling you it's small, um, that only act locally, they don't act systemically. Um, and please see my other video on the marina um, so you know this. Um, it doesn't, a lot a lot gets into the bloodstream, I can tell you now, it only acts locally. Um, and one of its things is it stops heavy menstrual bleeding, and that's why often it's used, and because it can be put in for five years, um, for, especially for heavy bleeding, and then replaced. Um, so this is, this is what, we, what we want people to know. Anyway, I thought I'd come on and talk about the difference between adenomyosis and endometriosis, and I hope hopefully that's helped you all. Take care.